How do we select an airfoil for our design when there are thousands of airfoils to choose from? In this series of videos, we will look at every aspect of airfoil design that will help us choose an appropriate airfoil. In part 1, we will look at the basics of airfoil geometry. Let's get started. One thing to note is that there is no magic airfoil. The selection of an airfoil is a compromise, just like every other aspect of aircraft design. We should not just pick an airfoil at the start of the design process. The first step should be to define the mission of the airplane. At the very least, the stall speed and the cruise speed of the airplane should be specified. The stall speed and cruise speed exemplify the inherent compromise in airfoil selection. Suppose you wish to design a fast cruising plane that has low drag. If we select an airfoil with a low drag coefficient, it will usually not have a very high max lift coefficient, which means the stall speed will be high. We could increase the wing area in order to decrease the stall speed, but this will come at a cost of increased parasitic drag. This defeats the original goal of using a low drag airfoil. On the other hand, if we choose an airfoil with a high max lift coefficient to decrease the stall speed, generally that airfoil will also have a high drag coefficient. So somewhere in the middle of these two extremes will be an airfoil that gives an acceptable mix of low enough drag and high enough max lift coefficient. The choice depends on what the requirements of the aircraft are. Before talking about the aerodynamic behavior of airfoils, we need to understand its geometry. Different parameters of the airfoil geometry affect its various aerodynamic and structural properties. Let's look at these geometry parameters one by one. The leading edge is the forward edge of the airfoil that encounters the oncoming airstream first. The air leaves the airfoil at the trailing edge, which is the rearmost point of the airfoil. The cord line is the straight line joining the most forward point on the leading edge to the aftmost point on the trailing edge. The length of the cord line is simply termed as the cord of the airfoil, represented by the letter C in equations. The camber line is a curve that connects the leading edge point and the trailing edge point of the airfoil in such a way that at each point along its length, the camber line is the same distance from the upper surface of the airfoil as it is from the lower surface. The shape of the camber line has a huge effect of the airfoil's lift, drag, and pitching moment. We will discuss this in the next videos of the series. The distance between the camber line and the cord line is referred to as the local camber. If the airfoil has its maximum local camber in the front portion, it is called a front or nose cambered airfoil. If the airfoil has its maximum local camber in the aft portion, then it is called an aft cambered airfoil. The distribution of max local camber has a great effect on the pitching moment of the airfoil as well as on the lift and drag, which we will discuss in the next videos. The maximum value of the local camber is an important parameter in the evaluation of the airfoil. The camber is always expressed as a percent of cord. For example, if an airfoil has as the maximum value of local camber 2% of the cord, that airfoil is said to have 2% camber. Airfoil thickness is represented by the thickness to cord ratio. The maximum value of this ratio is used to define the airfoil thickness. For example, if an airfoil has a 12% T by C, its maximum thickness is 12% of the cord and is called a 12% airfoil. If we draw a circle that is tangent to the leading edge and matches the curvature of the airfoil contour, then the radius of that circle is called as the leading edge radius. It affects stall behavior and CL max, which we will discuss in the next videos. The airfoil angle of attack is the angle between the cord line and the free stream air. The angle of attack is considered positive if it is at a nose-up angle with respect to the free stream air. When an airfoil moves through air, it generates two forces and one moment. In the next part of this video series, we will take a look at these forces and moment, which will help us choose an airfoil for a particular aircraft design. We are going to build on the basics discussed here so subscribe to the channel for latest updates on this airfoil design series. Thank you for watching.